Greetings and salutations, all you absolutely stunning individuals. We are back. It's League Unlock, Eric and Mark here with you, beauties. Feels like it's been a minute since we've done a little bit of off-season roundup. It's been mostly rumors, nothing confirmed, uh, nothing too tasty yet for all of these roster changes. But if you hadn't heard of what's likely going to be the latest NLC Champs, big draw. We've heard these rumors about Cadrill putting together a team. I feel like we've heard about this for a year plus now at this point, but Las Retanos is going to be a real thing. It's equal parts stream, dream team, slash meme, slash maybe serious because we're getting Bouse in the top lane. Reckless is in at support. That's world champion Reckless. You got Crowny in the bot lane, Nemesis in the mid lane, and throw in a little rookie Velia in the jungle. This team is going to pull an audience. Oh, man. Uh, you love the announcement poster for it because instead of the classic Reckless pose, we get a brand new one. The world champion trophy hold for him. Can yes. we bring that Lost to every video shoot so we can keep holding it? Is that <laughs> That might be part of the Los Ratones contract there. But yes, Los Ratones, we are thrilled to see this announcement come through. Don't want to get, you know, too much in the glazing type of category. But I think both of us think that what Cadrill has turned himself into in his stream and his career path has been a great turn for the league community. And one of these ones, the next step forward into this type of territory bringing forth a group together and everything else that we can talk about with that group. But individually, I think this is fantastic for the viewers. And, you know, immediately pump the brakes because this isn't a team that's looking to get promoted to the LEC. They're not vying like, yes, it's a serious squad, but we've heard Cadrill in his announcement for this kind of saying, we're going to be transparent with scripts. They're going to be public. I don't know if that means you're going to be able to spectate or they're just releasing the match history and then mentioned if they play an LEC team probably won't be public because LEC teams probably wouldn't be too happy about that. But he mentioned he was also in talks, uh, maybe getting one of the challenger teams over in the LCS that ultimately fell through. It was a little too complicated. This was the easiest path. The uh, NLC, which is kind of the UK Nordic uh, EU squad uh, league that kind of combined is probably like the least viewership, least well run. So if this team goes in, I expect the viewership to go up, oh, I don't know, a thousand percent at least. It will be massive the gains in viewership for this one because you can individually go through this lineup and pick a couple thousand here, five thousand here from these guys that have this type of viewer base that will watch these games. And then you bring in, of course, Cadrill, who we know has become the juggernaut of the league scene as far as co-streaming, any of these type of things go around. So very much so gonna be bringing that attention, these eyeballs towards uh, this part of the ERL, which is gonna be fantastic for the European scene. I think one of the things that is going to be very exciting about this one, as you said, might just be, of course, that yes, this isn't the team that is necessarily looking for that next opportunity for promotion, all these type of things to keep pushing it forward. That doesn't mean that checking in on these individual players and their chances, their future within the professional scene of League of Legends is not something that's gonna be on the table this time around when we're watching Los Ratones. This fully reminds me of, we're going back a bit here, I think it was 2018, basically the first EU Masters that had this lineup of Froggen, Forgiven, and Insec, and you're going, how's this an EU Masters regional team? But it was almost showing some of these older players, hey, we're still around, kind of playing the field, maybe we can get a team opportunity after this if we've performed well in this region. It's something that exists within traditional sports and esports is, is is joining in on it where people get this type of opinion, right? The general consensus becomes this situation went this way. This is the result. This is who's responsible for it and move on type of thing and put that label there. It's not always as easy as clean cut to do something like that. So to have these opportunities, to have the eyeballs then on, this type of opportunity is going to be something that I'm looking at for these people uh, to prove uh, some of the labels wrong. And one of uh, a couple of these guys definitely have some labels attached to them due to their previous experience on the professional stage. Very, very interested to see how some of these things go. And in 
even in uh, maybe a less serious environment that Los Ratones will present compared to a more traditional professional environment. Obviously, how Baus is playing, like, is, is he playing meta picks? We know he can actually play meta picks, but seeing him in an actual team environment is probably number one the most interesting thing here and then of course this is a power of friendship team nemesis and crowny go way back they've been boys and of course nemesis and reckless even they're still talking each other up years later after their times on fanatic which i think is is good because a lot of people have very good memories of that 2020 fanatic squad and kind of how things came together at the very end of the tournament Basically, when things were already decided that this group was going to be going their separate ways, things were going to fall apart. So I think a lot of people are, are going to be looking at that kind of core connection of Reckless and Nemesis together. Of course, I've gone through incredible different journeys in their career. Reckless uh, all the way through the LEC and LFL and going through the LCK challenger scene and this whole journey run up through Worlds as a champion with T1. And then Nemesis, well, Nemesis, he's been... He's been out of the scene. He's been away from any of these professional teams. That is not to say that he hasn't been engaged with the game at an extremely high level, at a professional type of level of practice and, and training regimen. You see him, he's streaming. He's playing the game all the time and he's still playing it at that high level. A lot of people, myself included, want to see what's in the tank. What is there? Because there have been many, many rumored opportunities or, or slots where you might say, this is the talent. This is the ticket that you need in the LEC to push that next envelope a little further. Now we get to see it here in the ERL. Yeah, and I think he is the main guy on this roster that maybe LEC teams might peek in every now and then because, as you said, he has been linked to teams almost every offseason. So seeing maybe what level he actually is at at a professional level, maybe he'll have an opportunity uh for the next split or next year, who knows, whatever it ends up being. But you might say, Reckless leaving T1, what a disaster offseason for the defending champs. But on the contrary, we, we thought it was unthinkable last year. But now, here we are again, announcing we're getting not just Kyria, but owner as well now on a two-year contract. And that... I mean, the dominoes are falling. It fully feels like, especially with Kyria, you know Guma's going to be coming back. I feel like they're just, they're probably working on some crazy video for his announcement. They got to, you know, <laughs> touch that up before he comes. And Zeus, all his profile stuff is all about Faker. So actually looking like Exodia is going to get run back again. It seems uh, pretty much ever since 2017, 2018, there is always one big story that dominates the off season that initially right out of the gate so firmly i'm able to say nope not happening no way jose that's not going to go down and then that player signs that contract and they move things things happen all these type of things this year it seems like the unthinkable thing to happen is going to just be resigning with your team staying together t1 able to do it again we didn't think they'd be able to do it last year and even with more cards stacked against them it looks like they'll be lining the deck right back up for another run through at this championship. Yes, owner re-signs Kyria already re-signed both of them, I believe, on that two-year contract type of situation. Front-loaded big time in these ones. Faker, as we know, is on that grandfathered contract heading towards the salary cap era of the LCK. You got to maximize that. While this contract is grandfathered through to 2025, that is where you get this little window, this opportunity, this pocket of some extra money compared to last year. The pay raises, the dues are all there for these other members of T1. Zayus is the only one I'm looking at. You said it because owner resigned, Kyria resigned, Guma probably going to resign because not just Kyria, but out of all these guys, Guma is the one that bleeds that T1 red right there. He is going to be in that lineup. No questions about it for me. Zeus, that's the big one and as you said before already he's got every single in-game thing tuned up to the faker hall of legends type of treatment how can this team possibly not fully resign and go back at it one more time yeah and it, it is that perfect window as you said because faker's contract was signed before this salary cap era came in uh it's already cheaper he's got multiple been with the team three plus years, has five LCK titles. These are all things to throw a discount on your salary. So 
a fraction of his salary is actually going uh, towards that salary cap for them, which means, and listen, T1, even if they go well over this tax, they, if you can re-sign these five, who cares? You're propping up the LCK because that's where that extra money goes. So T1 continues to just be the MVP of an entire region. And because they're putting these front-loaded contracts, when Faker's contract is up next year, they'll have less money to be looking at. So T1, like, this is a rare case where there's actually some finagling and magic going around with contracts. I feel like there's such little effort put into it a lot of the time with other organizations, but the implementation of this salary cap did force teams to be a little bit more creative. And I'm wondering just exactly how much this landscape will change how much will be learned how much will be taken from traditional sports and all the contract negotiations that we have seen you bring in through that salary cap and mentioning t1 of course wouldn't wouldn't blink wouldn't sweat at the thought of paying a luxury tax going over it in these type of situations look at baseball look at basketball all the time you're seeing these top level teams say yeah that's the salary cap whatever we're blown by it because we want this guy and we want this guy because we want to be better than these guys and we want to be at the very top. So you're seeing that now. And then the other factor to bring in, of course, pretty recent, brand new, the Los Angeles Dodgers, Shohei Otani, deferred contract money. That's going to be the thing that I'm, I want to see in the future and wonder if that's going to be maybe something protect, protected against. Because you better believe if they're able to do that in, in baseball with kind of two or three guys on a big lineup roster, you get to do that with two or three guys on a five, six man roster for a League of Legends team. You're really starting to maximize some of this money. T1 looks like they'll be returning as the world defending, defending world champions. Once again, I don't know if we've ever truly gotten to seeing a full roster run back in one of these type of situations. Yes, Roach has stepped away from the team, but it is more or less that run back again. And uh, yeah, let alone a world championship run back happening once. We talked about that last year. Twice is like well beyond unheard of um, status. And, you know, we've seen the revenue the last year or two for T1. So even when you're going over the luxury tax, this team is far and away the most famous team in that League of Legends esports bubble. So keeping the five of them, the rewards they will get in terms of fandom brand awareness probably well outweigh whatever they're paying in those taxes so it's obviously going to be a big domino effect for the rest of the lck everyone was sitting there frothing waiting which t1 member can we get uh none oh, oh wait wait uh, wait to steal all the thunder all the excitement you got ruler's agent posting out a, a cryptic picture of him signing a contract nobody knows who it's with whatever yeah. Who cares right now? Because it looks like the defending champions have fully reloaded for a third trip around. This is going to be a wild year set and setting up here for 2025. And they've, you know, back-to-back -back world championships. You got owners saying, hey, you know, I'd like to win some LCK titles, <laughs> which is like the opposite. Most teams saying, we've done it domestically. We got to do it internationally. T1, just the inverse of that. How can they keep getting scarier? How do they keep getting more of, of a thing that you could be feared in the LCK that these guys are the defending world champions, back-to-back -back world champions, and they're going, yeah, but we didn't get to take Gen G's lunch money in the LCK. What's this about? We got to we gotta take care of some of this stuff. Yeah. They are still hungry for more success and domination. Yeah, they only beat them on the world stage. Nobody cares about those matchups. It's all about the domestic finals. But yeah, heading into this new three-split format should be, again, refreshing for the same guys coming back. And first and foremost, we know they just love playing together. The vibes are immaculate on T1, especially when things are all running their way. So excited to hopefully see the five return and every other team is terrified as they should be as this team sticks together for yet another year. But that is it today for League Unlock. Eric and Mark here with you beautiful people. Thanks for hanging out and we will catch you on that flippity flip.